So the answer is within two weeks. <laughs> so why are we two weeks? <laughs> so we've got our next patch that will be coming out here shortly. I was actually just plugged into Jira a minute ago and brought up what was in the uh, patch that just dropped, and then what we have racked and stacked that's coming out in the next uh, product release. It should be coming out um, relatively shortly. Then we go through our, our next uh, three week cycle. So we've got patches every week with little fixes, and then the next big one that will come out. So that's what we're talking about for the next patch. Okay. Yes, ma'am. This is Lachlan from RA on a Lincoln Week. Uh, we got a question Friday about whether we would prefer our vendors would be okay with us paying everything in dollars instead of pounds. That's not what that email says. Okay. Let me clarify. Let me clarify what that email says. Or let me clarify what what was meant to go out. <laughs> PRs that come in, the funding of it is U.S. dollars. We fund in U.S. dollars. We do not fund in foreign currency. We don't have foreign currency in the U.S. We got U.S. dollar. Your contract is in whatever currency you need to issue it at. So the problem right now is, and I'll tell you, it's not only, it's not, it's a con IT problem, but it's also a Deems problem. Deems funds in foreign currency, and they should not be doing that. But that's part of that Oracle suite. And so they don't touch that. What you should be receiving is PRs in U.S. dollars, and then you decide, as the contracting professional, what currency you're actually going to issue that contract. That's what the question that went out was supposed to say. Because our vendor base would obviously prefer pounds whenever possible. We're also seeing that every, for the most part, almost all of our migrant in contracts, so we're trying to do funding bonds or yes. things like that, that are in pounds. Uh, Connaughty does not like them. Yes. So we're working around that, but just for feedback purposes. Okay. That's a lot of our work. I'm sure my counterparts in the safety and backup experience some of the same problems, but it's just making everything even more difficult. Yep. In migration issues, uh, what you're highlighting now are, I think, right below the card issues on the prior list. So we're working on this. Let's, let's make sure that prior list. Yes, I'll yeah, that way it, it, it's, it's already out on our SharePoint site. You can go out there and see our backlog and the priorities that are out there. So we'll make sure we get it out uh, and get the link out for you on the screen. Hi, Lieutenant Carroll, Tinker Air Force Base. I had a question about how the help desk communicates with each other. It seems like we have a lot of the same recurring issues on our contracts, but it will still sometimes take weeks and months to get a response back from the help desk. People to fix our contracts is really slowing things down for things that we think are going to turn out really quickly. Yeah, so this goes back to we were trying to dig ourselves out of the hole um, when, when this performance thing hit. And we knew it took a long time for you to get any results back. And quite frankly, we have about 700 tickets ish right now, but we don't know how many are still really issues or not. So, what I had the team looking at is cold calling and finding out what the real issues still are so we can focus our resources on those issues that still reside. But how how we communicate back to the users has got to improve. And I, I, uh, that's where that level one, level two help desk support is going to come into play and the additional resources in USDA because there's nothing more frustrating for me or as a user to submit something and I don't hear anything for two weeks, three weeks. It, it would drive me nuts. Because I know what you're trying to get with your mission, so you need to be able to determine, okay, do I need to do manual, or do I get, can I wait for the fix that's going to be coming out next week? And that's the kind of input that we need to be providing you back on your issues. Is there ever also going to be a time when us as users can submit tickets directly rather than going through the super user and kind of them playing the middleman? <coughs> Yeah, I don't. Let me take that. Take that as an answer. I, I don't know the answer just because it's security things. It's all that. But let me let me take that as an action. I'll be back to that. All right. So, um, on your first question, just so you know, I got briefing two weeks ago from a program manager 
and they are well aware of that problem, and they believe that's unacceptable as well. What he mentioned to you about the fixes that, you know, when I, went out to, I flew out to Fort Collins in December, we had, they had the government shutdown issue, uh, that got restarted. They identified the funding to hire more USDA coders because some of these problems um, require coders, and we got to increase the pipes, uh, the, the capacity for the coders. And there, as, as with our civilian personnel problems, they're having trouble getting the hiring actions completed, right? So we're staying on that. The program manager is well aware of that. And then what Patrick referred to too is even, even if we don't have the pipes yet to get to that particular one, we need to communicate that back better. They, they are well aware of that. And um, I heard the program manager sit in my office and say, it's unacceptable and we're going to fix that. So please be patient. They do, they are aware, but please be patient. You know, these, these fixes are coming in serial fashion and we've had some challenges with the shutdown and other things. But everybody has a sense of urgency, and I think everybody is uh, hearing you loud and clear is what, I, what I'm going to tell you. I agree with you that. Okay. And um, my overall intention, now understand this, communication is hard. When I think I've communicated something a lot, a thousand times in a thousand ways, and then I hear somebody say, how come you don't ever tell us this? <laughs> and, and it's just, it's not because you're not listening, and it's not because I'm not trying, or in this case, anybody, right? Communication, folks, is so hard. It really is hard. Um, and so that's why, you know, we got to use the methods we've got for, for asking questions. But I need you to understand my intention clearly, out of my own mouth. My intention is max transparency. My intention is not to break trust with this workforce. I'm going to tell it like it is, and I don't care who likes that or who doesn't. I'm going to listen to what you give me, and I'm going to work it for you. And if you think that you're not getting information from me or somebody else in this enterprise, right, that, that, um, that meets that standard of maximum transparency, keep, keep fighting through the, the communication gap because that is the intention, that's my direction, the guidance to my own team, um, and then that's the way that we're going to go. That's the only way we're going to fix this. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Dave Sharp from SMC, and my question is two parts. First, uh, what's the likelihood that this will never work with the systems environment? And two, what is being done with Conrite to try to fix Conrite for the next couple of years? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, I have a very high confidence that we'll be able to support all contracting across the board, regardless of what it is. Uh, that's grants, um, contingency, R&D, um, um, ALCs, everything, LCMC, everything. I, I have full confidence we'll be able to do that. Uh, as far as Conrad and fixing it, um, this is where we're going to have to come together as a team and figure out, okay, when can we start working on increment two? And how much money do we invest to keep Conrad going versus shifting resources over to start on our increment two and getting uh, Conrad team to support that effort as well? Because it's going to require a lot of functional support for the development for our increment two. It's going to require a lot. So where do we apply our sources, going, resources going forward? So that's something we're going to talk with AFMC on um, and the ALCs to figure where that balance is. Okay. So you're going to like 90%? <laughs> well, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, actually, I, I'd say 95% confidence. I got a 95% confidence level. We will, I will make it work. I will make it work. Somehow, it will work. All right, that's good. We have time for one more question. Great. Pat <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corbin, Eckley Air Force Base, AMTC. 
curious if you have anybody dedicated um, to work with the CLS issues that we have with DOD. Yes, uh, she's on my staff, Ms. Tracy Crockett. Um, and I can get you her information. Um, she's my clause logic uh, POC that works directly with them. And we actually sent her uh, for a broadening opportunity to OSD. So she's intimately aware and, and working those issues. So um, I'll get you, the, uh, we'll post that information out there for you. She may be watching, but she should be watching. Thanks. Watching? <laughs> Okay, so actually I have one last question. Um, since this was created by the USDA, don't you find it ironic that we have beef with them? Hard <laughs> <laughs> cut, baby. Thank you. I want to thank you all for your candor and your patience and your professionalism as we work through this really tough problem today. So, um, so anyway, thank you. Uh, to the, and please pass on my thanks to the folks for their patience and professionalism. I know how much work around and, and work and manual activities go on. And I have sat in their seats and I know how crushing it is. I promise you we're going to work this until it is finished. Okay? Thanks. Well, thank you all. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So we need to see if there's quite a few people left with questions. So, uh, thanks for my standing up. If you have uh, further questions, look for this guy, Major Mark Wagner. He's going to be outside in the foyer, so look for him. He'll probably have a target on his back if he doesn't already. Oh, nope, it's not there yet. But go ahead and look for him. Um, and we are going to be breaking for lunch. So we will have um, about 30 minutes to get lunch, get your food, come back in. We're going to be having a work and lunch presentation that I'm positive that you don't want to miss today. So with that, um, let's get more to lunch.